We gather on the traditional land of the Anishinaabe and the Mississauga people. And as always, we remember that they once walked this land and that they took care of this land and that it is an honor to be upon this land. Welcome. Today is perhaps the saddest day of the Christian year. It is a day that we remember the death of Jesus on the cross. And like all funerals, I invite you to express your feelings uh, as you need to. It is not unusual for people to be brought to tears on this day, as I might myself. So I invite you to feel as you need to feel. There is a response in our call to worship in your bulletin. You have watched with Jesus through the night. You have come with him to this place. Is it your intention to continue to follow Jesus? Yes, it is our intention to follow Jesus. Then let us walk with him this day. Today, uh, when we sing, I will ask that you remain seated. Follow, you ask us, O oh God, as we watch what is happening to Jesus today. We are not sure it is a question we want to answer today. We are not sure it is a question that we can answer today. Will we come and follow when the path is filled with chaos and betrayal? Will we come and follow when we ourselves are overwhelmed with emotions and grief? Will we come and follow and be witnesses to the greatest act of love? Yet here we are, gracious God, drawn by your love, compelled by your grace. Here we are as witnesses, sad and fearful as may be. Amen. We're going to listen to uh, Jesus We Are Here Once Through and then we will sing it twice through together.
Our first reading is from Mark 14. Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went to the chief priests to give Jesus up to them. When they heard it, they were delighted and promised to give him money. So he started looking for an opportunity to turn him in. I'll invite Yola up to do the second reading. Jesus and his disciples came to a place called Gethsemane. Jesus said to them, sit here while I pray. He took Peter, James, and John along with him. He began to feel despair and was anxious. He said to them, I'm very sad. It's as if I'm dying. Stay here and keep alert. Then he went a short distance farther and fell to the ground. He prayed that, if possible, he might be spared this time of suffering. He said, Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Take this cup of suffering away from me. However, not what I want, but what you want. He came and found them sleeping. He said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Couldn't you stay alert for one hour? Stay alert and pray so that you don't give in to temptation. The spirit is eager, but the flesh is weak. Again, he left them and prayed, repeating the same words. And again, when he came back, he found them sleeping, for they couldn't keep their eyes open, and they didn't know how to respond to him. He came a third time and said to them, Will you sleep and rest all night? That's enough. The time has come for the human one to be betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up. Let's go. Look. Here comes my betrayer. We'll now listen to Jim play Go to Dark Gethsemane once through and then we will sing it through once together. Jesus was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, came with a mob carrying swords and clubs. They had been sent by the chief priests, legal experts, and elders. His betrayer had given them a sign, arrest the man I kiss and take him away under guard. As soon as he got there, Judas said to Jesus, Rabbi, then he kissed him. Then they came and grabbed Jesus and arrested him. 
One of the bystanders drew a sword and struck the high priest's slave and cut off his ear. Jesus responded, Have you come with swords and clubs to arrest me like an outlaw? Day after day I was with you, teaching in the temple, but you didn't arrest me. But let the scriptures be fulfilled, and all his disciples left him and ran away. reading from Mark chapter 14, 53 to 72. They led Jesus away to the high priest and all the chief priests, elders, and legal experts gathered. Peter followed him from a distance right into the high priest's courtyard. He was sitting with the guards, warming himself by the fire. The chief priests and the whole Sanhedrin were looking for testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death but they couldn't find any. Many brought false testimony against him, but they contradicted each other. Some stood to offer false witness against him, saying, We heard him saying, I will destroy this temple constructed by humans, and within three days I will build another, one not made by humans. But their testimonies didn't agree even on this point. Then the high priest stood up in the middle of the gathering, and examined Jesus. Aren't you going to respond to the testimony these people have brought against you? But Jesus was silent and didn't answer. Again, the high priest asked, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed One? Jesus said, I am. And you will see the human one sitting on the right side of the Almighty and coming on the heavenly clouds. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, Why do we need any more witnesses? You've heard his insult against God. What do you think? They all condemned him. He deserves to die. Some began to spit on him. Some covered his face and hit him, saying, Prophecy! Then the guards took him and beat him. Mark 14, verses 66 to 72. Meanwhile, Peter was below in the courtyard. A woman, one of the high priest's servants, approached and saw Peter warming himself by the fire. She stared at him and said, You are also with the Nazarene, Jesus. But he denied it, saying, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't understand what you're saying. And he went outside into the outer courtyard a rooster crowed. The female servant saw him and began a second time to say to those standing around, this man is one of them, but he denied it again. A short time later, those standing around again said to Peter, you must be one of them because you are also a Galilean. But he cursed and swore, I don't know this man you're talking about. At that very moment, a rooster crowed a second time. Peter remembered what Jesus told him. Before a rooster crows twice, you will deny me three times. And he broke down, sobbing.
daybreak, the chief priests, with the elders, legal experts, and whole Sanhedrin, formed a plan. They bound Jesus, led him away, and turned him over to Pilate. Pilate questioned him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus replied, That's what you say. The chief, chief priests were accusing him of many things. Pilate asked him again, aren't you going to answer? What about all these accusations? But Jesus gave no more answers, so that Pilate marveled. During the festival, Pilate released one prisoner to them, whomever they requested. A man named Barabbas was locked up with the rebels who had committed murder during an uprising. The crowd pushed forward and asked Pilate to release someone, as he regularly did. Pilate answered him, Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? He knew 
that the chief priests had handed him over because of jealousy. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas to them instead. Pilate replied, Then what do you want me to do with the one you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back, Crucify him. Pilate said to them, Why, what wrong has he done? They shouted even louder, Crucify him. Pilate wanted to satisfy the crowd, so he released Barabbas to them. He had Jesus whipped and then handed him over to be crucified. A reading from Mark 15, 16 to 37. The soldiers led Jesus away into the courtyard of the palace known as the governor's headquarters. And they called together the whole company of soldiers. They dressed him up in a purple robe and twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on him. They saluted him, Hail, King of the Jews! Again and again they struck his head with a stick. They spit on him and knelt before him to honor him. When they finished mocking him, they stripped him of the purple robe and put his own clothes back on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. Simon, a man from Cyrene, Alexander and Rufus's father, was coming in from the countryside. They forced him to carry his cross. They brought Jesus to a place called Golgotha, which means skull place. They tried to give him wine mixed with myrrh, but he didn't take it. They crucified him. They divided up his glows, drawing lots for them to determine who would take what. It was nine in the morning when they crucified him. The notice of the formal charge against him was written, the King of the Jews. They crucified two outlaws with him, one on his right and one on his left. People walking by insulted him, shaking their heads and saying, ha, so you were going to destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, were you? Save yourself and come down from that cross. In the same way, the chief priests were making fun of him among themselves, together with the legal experts. Uh, he saved others, they said, but he can't save himself. <laughs> Let the Christ, the King of Israel, come down from the cross. Then we'll see and believe. Even those who had been crucified with Jesus insulted him. From noon until three in the afternoon, the whole earth was dark. At three, Jesus cried out with a loud shout, Ali, Ali, lama shabaktini, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? After hearing him, some standing there said, Look, he's calling Elijah. Some ran, filled a sponge with sour wine and put it on a pole. He offered it to Jesus to drink, saying, let's see if Elijah will come to take him down. But Jesus let out a loud cry and died.
We will sing Jesus, Remember Me three times through. from Mark 15, 40 to 47. Some women were watching from a distance, including Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, the younger one, and Joseph and Salome. When Jesus was in Galilee, these women had followed and supported him, along with many other women who had come to Jerusalem with him. Since it was late in the afternoon on preparation day, just before the Sabbath, Joseph from Arimathea, dared to approach Pilate and asked for Jesus' body. Joseph was a prominent council member who also eagerly anticipated the coming of God's kingdom. Pilate wondered if Jesus was already dead. He called the centurion and asked him whether Jesus had already died. When he learned from the centurion that Jesus was dead, Pilate gave the body to Joseph. He bought a linen cloth, took Jesus down from the cross, wrapped him in the cloth, and laid him in the tomb that had been carved out of rock. He rolled a stone against the entrance to the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, saw where he was buried. Who now will carry the good news of Jesus into the world? Is there anyone left to follow the way of Jesus? Will you continue to follow the way of Jesus? What will that mean for your life? We'll now take a few moments for quiet reflection on these questions.
just want to thank everybody for coming today and just remind you that uh, we'll be here on Sunday for a communion service. Uh, I'll also be at Gall Lake Park for a sunrise service at 7 o'clock. Uh, as many of you know, there's construction going on down there, but if you just go down the driveway, you can park along the side, unless you're walking over and we'll meet down on the beach. We're going to conclude the service uh, by singing through uh, oh God, hear my prayer three times. At the end of that three times, I'll place the Christ candle at the foot of the cross. Uh, you may stay and continue to sing for a little bit if you'd like. The choir is going to keep singing. Mm -hmm. The choir is going to keep singing uh, until everybody has left the sanctuary. And I ask that you, uh, as you leave, that you leave in silence. And I hope to see you Sunday. Thanks. Oh, God.